Good morning, and welcome to our online worship service this morning. I want to welcome you, whether you're joining us for our YouTube premiere or whether you're joining us at some point later in the week. We are so very grateful for this opportunity to be together. I invite you to set this time aside, to set it apart from any other multitasking work, and to be present to the Holy Spirit and to one another as we worship together this morning. I'm the Reverend Karen Gigax Rodriguez, and I greet you in the name of God, our Creator, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, in the name of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter and our Guide. Today we're going to be looking at the celebration of Epiphany. We're going to remember the star that led the wise men to the place where Jesus was born. We're going to remember the wise ones as they sought to be on the trail with the star, caught up in the tail of the star, and being in its glory as it finds its resting place over the place where Jesus was born. And as we do this, we are part of that same gathered community in Christ, knowing that being together in community is important, knowing that no one stands alone. As we worship today, I invite you to join us in the chat area to share any comments, any prayer requests, any uh, words of gratitude that you bring today. You might from time to time hear some um, gratitude from my kitty cats in the background because they join me today and my one little guy is, or not so little guy, is kind of vocal this morning, but uh, the animals too, they bring their gratitude. As we think about the things for which we're grateful today, I wonder what you would want to share with us. I am so grateful for our Saturday School, which is where our children have an opportunity to learn about their faith. And yesterday we just finished the series of uh, the Christmas story, the Advent story, and with the Epiphany story. And, and the children are so wise and so perceptive. And it's just a joy to be with them. So I'm grateful for our Saturday school children. I'm grateful that each day it's getting light or the light is lasting a little bit longer. So as the earth revolves around the sun, we are coming back into longer days. And I am grateful for every second of more daylight. And then recently, this weekend, we're celebrating six Eagle Scout recipients, three of whom are part of our church. Colin, Ethan, and Drew Schneider all are receiving their Eagle Scout awards. And then we're also remembering Michael Taylor, who was a part of our VBS program. We're remembering Henry Walheim and Evan Conlin as well, as they all uh, get to celebrate such great work. What are you grateful for this morning? And would you be willing to list that in our chat area as we worship together and begin with gratitude? And I would invite us to share together this uh, affirmation of gratitude that we share every Sunday. Lord, you are an abundant giver. There is nothing that I have that you have not given me. The way of your kingdom is the way of generosity. Help us to honor you with our resources. Free us from the deceit of riches. Lead us on the path of generosity. For your glory, Lord, for the abundance of our own lives, and for the sake of others. Amen. And this morning, as we look at any prayer requests or prayer needs. I bring these names and situations and I also invite you to list anything in our chat area for which you would like us to pray and we will include that in our prayers as well. We want to pray for Jerry L who um, recently transferred from being in the hospital to being at Juliet Manor 
and uh, we want to pray for Jerry. We want to pray for Kim, who continues to recover from surgical procedures and from health issues, and we want to give Kim um, lots of love and support through our prayers. We also want to remember John D., who um, is having difficulty with breathing, and I'm sure the cold weather does not help that, and so we remember John. And we remember all who might be confined to their homes for whatever reason at this turn of our season. Um, we are grateful that we have this way of connecting with you, and we remember you if you are confined to your home, and we pray for you. A young man by the name of Gavin, who has connections with our church and our community, um, is recovering after a bad ski accident. And so we want to pray for Gavin's recovery and uh, that God would help his body to heal. Again, we want to pray for everything, everyone who is affected by COVID um, and just continue to lift that in prayer mindfully to God. For any who might be affected by the cold and the extreme weather that we've been having recently, we want to lift you in prayer. And we want to remember our health care system and the stress of our health care system and the way it's affecting everyone's lives. So what are you uh, carrying as prayer requests today? And as you think about this, I would like to uh, share in a time of prayer together with you. So let us join together in a time of prayer. God and Lord of all creation, lover of life and of everything, please help us to love in our very small way what you love infinitely and everywhere. We thank you that we can offer just this one prayer and that it will be more than enough. Because in reality, everything and everyone is connected and nothing stands alone. To pray for one part is really to pray for the whole. And so we do. Help us each day to stand for love, for healing, for the good, for the diverse unity of the body of Christ and all creation. Because we know that this is what you desire. As Jesus prayed, that all may be one. We offer our prayer together with all of the holy names of God, and we offer our prayer together with Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our morning scripture reading is actually an Old Testament reading which speaks about God gathering the people from the four corners of the world, north and south, east and west. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord, he created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. 
I give people in return for you, nations, in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Thank you, Mitchell and Bruna, for that beautiful piece. Children hold a very special place in my heart. And this image is one I just love. It brings joy to my soul. Six children forming a six-pointed star. The star couldn't be formed without each one. They stand together to make this one shape. The body of this star composed of six individual bodies. Remove one and the star is incomplete. This Sunday, we remember the star. And we remember the wise ones that the star brought from the East. Even as a baby, Jesus, as God in human form, gathered people to himself. The prophet Isaiah says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made, will be gathered. This is the beginning of the everyone. The star over the stable gathering everyone towards the light of life. We are created for God's glory. We are gathered by the same star. Together we are a part of the star, or as Paul put it, a part of the body, and we are not meant to stand alone. 
While not claiming to understand astrophysics well, I do know that both our sun and our moon, these two bigger lights in the sky that we see on a daily basis, have pulling together, gathering gravitational force. The gravity of the sun, as I understand it, holds the earth in orbit around it. And the gravity of the moon influences the pull of the tides of our oceans. These celestial bodies are source and reflection of light that holds things together. I've shared this before, but I just love the imaginative connections of gravity and glory of stars as example of glory. The Hebrew word is the word kabod. In its root form, this word means heavy weighted object. So glory is a heavy weighted object. It has mass, it has substance to it, but glory isn't stagnant. It isn't a non-moving thing, it moves. Glory moves as a heavy weighted object moves. And when heavy weighted objects move, they create a pulling force. As a moving object moves through our Earth's atmosphere, it encounters friction and it makes it glow. Glowing glory, gravitational glory that sheds light as it moves and gathers, pulls to itself like this star that pulls the wise ones in its tail, on its trail to rest over the place where the child is. Jesus then becomes the king of glory, the glory of all glory, the one who pulls the pieces together, pulls the nations from south and north, east and west, the one who holds us all in the gravity of God's love, the one who gathers us all together. We become beloved, the beloved with whom God is well pleased and no one of us and nothing stands alone. Richard Rohr's work right now is centering on this phrase, nothing stands alone. Here's some thoughts from Richard Rohr this past week as you hear my kitty cat knocking on the back of my, my uh, backdrop here. But Paul says, the hand cannot say to the foot, I do not know you. Each body part needs the other and only in their connectedness are they the body. That's really brilliant. He came up with this recognition. We've got to get people to a unitive consciousness, Rohr says. I'm of the opinion that perhaps what is undone religion, what has undone religion in general, Christianity in particular, is its gross individualism that everybody pursues, not everybody, but an awful lot, pursue pursue religion as a private enlightenment journey. How can I be special or spiritually smart? And I can do it all alone. I don't have to belong to any neighborhood association, which is just a modern word for what used to be called church. I don't have to belong to any group because I don't really need support. But I think now science, physics, and biology is saying what theology always tried to say, that nothing stands alone. Those were Rohr's thoughts, and I completely agree with him. We need to move beyond a very self-contained, self-centered individual standing alone, I don't need anybody mentality. We need to regain our sense of gathered community. It strikes me powerfully that the only way we are truly ever going to defeat the ravage effects of this COVID pandemic will be by working together as one global body. If the disease run rampant in any place in the world, it will affect the whole world, it does. 
at the beginning, it was such a dangerous and sequestering disease, threatening to pull us apart and isolate us from one another. Now, it is still dangerous, but working together with vaccinations and testing, with masking, we make headway in defeating it. We can't just solve it here in the United States, but we have to care enough for all of our sisters and brothers in the whole world to help solve it globally, to help get the vaccinations to the places where they're not getting, to work together. We won't defeat it by being individuals or taking care only of our country. We will defeat it by being a global body. We know that there is beautiful diversity in our world, but deeper than our diversity is the truth of our created foundation, which binds us all together as one body. Episcopalian Bishop Michael Curry, the priest who gave the wedding sermon at uh, Prince Harry and Meghan's royal wedding, spoke about and speaks about the need that we all have to learn to love one another. Because the scriptures say, the only time the scriptures say what God is, they say God is love. And we were created of this love. If we are in the image of God, we are in the image of love. We were created for this love, in God's love, for love of the world. And love, like glory, is a gathering force. Love never stands alone. Curry says that the opposite of love is not hate, but self-centeredness. The opposite of love is thinking we can stand apart and that we somehow are self-made and we need no one else. We have been on a movement over my lifetime of the world becoming a smaller place, of bringing the world together. We have the World Wide Web. We have cell phone technology that helps us be able to talk with someone almost anywhere in the whole world and even in space. Andrew, our youngest son, who's on a collegiate training trip in Hawaii, I know, <laughs> bad luck, right? right? But anyhow, the other day I was trying to text him and I mistakenly called him, so I hung up right away, but he called me back. He said, Mom, what's wrong? I said, nothing's wrong. I was trying to, trying to text you, but then I was just caught up in the fact that he's hours away by plane. He's thousands of miles away. He's in the middle of the ocean somewhere, and here we are talking like he's just next door. When I traveled, when I was in college, you couldn't call because that was just an expense you couldn't even afford. And letters took two weeks to get one way. We are so connected. We can have a sense of being together. Techno technologically and in many other ways, we are being gathered together from all the directions in the world into one global body, this body that we really are. Voices of many languages, families of many economies, bodies of many colors, cultures of beautiful creativity and diversity. But we are one, and none of us, nothing stands alone. When Jesus tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love our enemies, to shower our enemy with kindness, he is asking us to see ourselves gathered together in his name, by his glory, in one body. We must fight and work diligently to repair the fractured nature of this body of Christ. We must challenge our sense of pride that somehow we are self-made and that we can stand alone, not needing anyone else. This is simply not true. We are not self-made. I cannot put words into print. I can't write this sermon without using a computer or a pen or paper, all constructed by someone else with materials harvested or created by someone. These clothes on my body were made by someone. This was a Christmas gift 
for me, and it was literally woven by hand, each string set by hand, woven by a woman from Guatemala. Most of our clothes are made by people from other parts of the world. Our food is grown by someone, harvested by someone, transported by someone. We may have differences of thought and understanding and gifts and personalities, differences of religion and language and culture and ethnicity, but as humans, we are all bodies. Given the gift of life from God, our creator, we are all loved by the one who came not to condemn the world, but that we would believe and would understand how loved we are. Great suffering happens when we have cracks and fractures in our body, when we have ruptures in our relationships, when we determine that some are necessary but others are not. For us, to follow the star is to be caught up in the gathering love of God that brings and binds us together. So I would like us today to consider how we might be more bodybuilding this week. Not in a puffed up prideful, look at my great body way, but together, how we might glorify God by doing our part to gather the body together in love. This past week, I was visiting one of our shut-in members who's at Juliet Manor in Berlin. He has a huge room, but it's sterile. This twin bed that is his looks lost in the vastness of this room. And as I was in the room, I saw no evidence of cards or connections. Just a TV that was on too loud in a bare stark room. And he wonders if he is forgotten. Newer members of our church wouldn't know who he is but he was extremely devoted to our church all the active years of his life. And what makes it worse, of course, are the restrictions of visitation because of COVID. So what if we showered him with cards? What if we showered those of our loved ones we know who are caught at home, who are sequestered now for whatever reason? What if we reminded them they are not forgotten, that we love them, that they are important to us? This gentleman always loved flowers and had beautiful flower beds. Even real flowers would bring such joy to him. If you want more information, please just connect with me or connect with the church office and I can get you the information of whom to send that to. So that he remembers he's a part, an important, essential part of the body and he does not stand alone. There are other fractures in our sense of community that might not be so easily seen or known, but how can we be alert to the possibilities of God's glory as we go through this week in the people that we meet? How can we acknowledge the worth of someone who has disappointed us or maybe caused us to be angry? What internal spiritual prayer work might we do to readjust how our soul sees someone? Or instead of deciding who someone is based upon their political positions, how can we see them as someone God wishes to gather together with us from the four corners of the world? Recently, we lost a giant of glory in the death of Bishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa. And he reminded us in his great work that there's a Zulu proverb called Ubuntu that says, I am a person through other people. He explained it this way, that one of the sayings in our country is Ubuntu, the essence of being human. Ubuntu speaks particularly about the fact you can't exist as a human being in isolation. And Tutu helped South Africa move beyond the present and historic horror of apartheid with Ubuntu and his truth and reconciliation work. The agreement made was to take as long as it needed to hear the truth about the horror 
and the pain and suffering, the fracturing, the abuse to the whole body that the people of South Africa endured, and then for acknowledgement and forgiveness to be the response. Now, it was far from perfect, but it literally remembered the people of South Africa into a common human body, black, colored, and white. God has put it upon my soul this week to lift up our sense of community. To bring glory to God, to glorify God, means that we will care for one another, that we will see one another as important to us, as part of our body. It is not all right to stand alone or stand defended against one another as enemies. Let us look for the ways God will use to mend our community through us and to love his people. Let no one be left alone and let no one stand alone. Hear these words again from Isaiah. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Amen.
I have a few announcements that I'd like to share with you. Our annual meeting will be taking place on January 16th, which is next Sunday at 11.30, so immediately following the uh, online worship service. This is the meeting ID number and also the pass code, and, uh, but I can also send that information to you or you can call the church office and get that information. I have a Zoom invite that you might have received in your email inbox and that would include the same information. But we would love to have as many people as possible for our annual meeting, so we hope that you can attend. We have a new book study starting this week, and um, because we will be celebrating soon the uh, birthday of Martin Luther King Jr., the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and um, in the month of February, of course, Black History Month, we decided to read this very classic text, which are sermons by the Reverend Martin Dr. Luther King, and they are just amazing sermons. So if you're interested in this study, we meet Thursdays from 6.30 to 7.45, and we would love to have you join us. Just connect with me, and I will get you the link to that. As always, we are so very grateful for those who financially support our church, and again, these are the different ways that people can financially support our church. You can send a check to the church. You can send a bank check or have your bank send a check. You can use electronic funds transfer, which is something you sign up with carry with at the church office. Or you can use PayPal, which you can find at our church website under the Give tab and then under Online Giving. As we conclude today, I have these words of benediction, and then I will put back on the screen for just a little bit that uh, information about our annual meeting. We have celebrated together that Jesus Christ came to be known by every person, every country, every culture on earth, for he is the Savior of all. May we come to know him better and then make him known to others, especially by the way that we live. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace of Christ and walk in his light. Thanks be to God. Amen.